Welcome to the No Rain, No Rainbows podcast. This is a show about pushing through obstacles and hard times in order to live a happy and fulfilled life. I'm your host, Ted Fayton, and it's a pleasure to have you joining us. I hope you enjoy today's episode. Let's grow. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the No Rain, No Rainbows podcast. Thanks for being on. And as always, big shout out to my executive producer, Andre Suttles, Suttles Solution Media, for helping to make this podcast possible. We have a great episode for you. We have entrepreneur, digital nomad, Benjamin Sklevas on the podcast today. Benjamin, we've already been having fun. Yeah, we have. I love it. I'm, <laughs> I'm having a good time already. So I'm really looking forward to the chats. And hopefully we're going to get through these questions without breaking character. So yeah. let's, uh, let's get right into it. <laughs> and scene, right? Um, I always want to make sure that our, our audience and our guests have an opportunity to get acquainted. So really quick, let them know who you are, a quick rundown of your story, where you're from, what you do. And um, then we can hop into talking about some, some of the things that we've experienced today. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so like, like you guys said, like you said, uh, my name is Benjamin Sklevas. I am a digital nomad from Montreal, Quebec. Uh, I have a blogging slash podcasting website called The Arbitrary Author. And um, I am also the director of sales at a marketing firm called Boost in Montreal. We, we, we work with organic, native, and cloaking SEO. And we've had, you know, 52,000 clients out of all, they've all gone first page Google. That's my drop. And <laughs> I'm, I'm no longer going to be dropping business because I'm, I'm all about the conversation and really learning about, you know, giving back and really trying to, to, to make sure that people are getting value from this type of episode and really yeah. trying to give back in the way that I can. Yeah. And, and uh, I appreciate, man. I, and I appreciate your story because I'm, I'm going to just jump right in. And I, yeah, yeah. I know with one thing we talked about and you have on, on, on your bio about ADHD being your superpower. Yeah. And, and I, I, I love that because um, I am one who people would joke to me. They're like, Oh, Ted, you have ADHD. Cause I'm all over the place. Right. And that's just, I'm how I've always been. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like that's just how I've always been. Um, but for me to kind of, have that mindset of okay is this a detriment or actually being a superpower for you to kind of not only fully embrace that but display that I'm, mm -hmm. I'm interested in what that journey was like have you always felt it was a superpower or was there kind of like some reflection and transformation there ah uh, that's a really good question <clears throat> so I, i'm gonna be completely transparent and honest about it um adhd sucks you know mm -hmm. it, it, it's not easy and it never was easy for me to this day it's still not easy for me uh, it's a superpower because I want to make it a superpower. It's a superpower because I don't want to focus on the negative aspects that come with having ADHD. It's, it's less so that it's an actual superpower and it's more so me trying to end that stigma around people saying it's X, Y, Z, it's a disability, it's this, that, and the other thing. So it may not necessarily be an actual superpower per se, but it's my it's my power, you know, it's mm -hmm. me and it's what makes me me. So in my understanding, in my, in my growth throughout my life, I've always had it hindering over me. You know, I, I remember going and being in high school and my, my family telling me, you need to go get checked and you need to have a doctor assess you and that and this. And I remember it was so scary. Like I was 13 years old and my dad's like here you need to go into this basement and get an assessment from this lady you know <laughs> like putting mm. together blocks yeah and you know it only got worse from there it got really really bad in high school I wasn't able to really focus I wasn't able to be myself and it, it's it's affected most every part of my life you know socially education like personal everything you know I I sometimes I feel like I'm obnoxiously loud and out out there and sometimes I feel like I'm a, I'm, I'm a hinder on my friends and sometimes I feel like I'm just flat out stupid you know like mm. it, it's not easy and it, it's really bad because personally I, I've had it affect me my whole life and I'm only now starting to see the value in that and mm. it, it's taken hours and hours of therapy and it's taken a lot of self-reflecting and it's taken a lot of failures, you know? And, and when I say failures, I mean consistent, really repetitive, repetitive failures. And it affects me and I still, it still affects me to this day, but you know, 
I think that the one thing that I've learned from it all is that I've, I always tried to make those negative aspects of my life, the ones that are really, really affected by ADHD. I always tried to make those negatives into a positive, which is not going to work. So I, um, I started focusing on what I was good at, you know, speaking, creativity, counseling, talking to people and making and, and understanding the direction of where they want to go, you know, end goal things where other people don't see things. I see manners of getting there. Mm-hmm. And it, it, it took a really long time. And it, I didn't love myself for a really long time. I'm, I'm, I'm still not 100%. I'm going to be completely honest about it. But, you know, every day is, a, is, a, is, is something you need to work at. Every day you need to work on yourself. Every day you need to work on the internal aspects of yourself. And I think that that internal dialogue, especially for people with ADHD, is not always positive, you know? Yeah. And I just, I don't want other people to feel alone like I did. So what I'm really trying to do is really trying to give people the, the chance to know that there are communities out there. There are tools and tricks for parents. And there are things that we can do to make sure that we can be the best people that we are rather than consistently depending on amphetamines mm-hmm. per se. Yeah. So, and it's, it's embracement, man. And, I, and that's what I love mm-hmm. so much about what you kind of just depicted. Cause you know, a lot of us, whether we we take a, a a prescribed tag for me, I've shared on the podcast. I was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis, which is an autoimmune disease which attacks my large intestine. Which yeah. it's something that I have to live with. And full yeah. transparency, I have to know where there's a bathroom constantly, just, just most my own <laughs> comfort, right? But I can either take that label and make it own me, or mm. I can embrace it and understand that there's still gifts and what I'm able to do and where I'm able to apply myself. And this is not a hindrance. It's just part of my story that it's allows awesome. me to utilize myself even better. I know. And, and man, I'm telling you, like I was second year university, right? <clears throat> Knees deep in Adderall. <laughs> and, and I'm in the library and I'm like scratching my head. I'm feeling my head. And I'm like, what the fuck is it? Like, what's happening? Right. And so I get home and my friend's like, hey, man, let's, let's tattoo each other. I'm like, yeah, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> and um, she's like looking at my neck. She's looking at my head. She's like, Ben, you have a, you have a hole in like you're missing hair. I'm like, oh God, what the fuck? And I th- and, and, and it was, it was uh, April Fool's Day. So I thought my friend had shaved my head, you know? <laughs> and I go to the doctor and then my doctor's like, oh yeah, you, you have an autoimmune disease. You have alopecia. And I'm like, God damn, just keep adding them on. Yeah. And so, so, you know, I, it, it, it's caused by stress and anxiety. And that, that's something I have a lot of issues with, you know, I'm really anxious and I'm really high strung. So, yeah. you know, I, I know where exactly where you're coming from. I, I know the feeling. And I think that, I think that that's what makes us us. I think it makes us what we've gone through understandable. It makes us, you know, our story. I think that that's really important. I think that our story is, you know, the one unique thing that we each have that, that, you know, that chest that we all really, really keep close and dear to our heart. And some people share, some people share about it and the other people keep it secret. And I kept mine a secret a really long time. I I kept most of my life a secret a really long time, but I'm at this point where I, I think it's not that I don't care about what other people think. I think it's more so the effect that I no longer, I no longer am affected by the way that people look at me. Yeah. And, you know, I think that we've all been in a situation where we've all made mistakes and regrets and we've forgotten to do something here and there. And whether it's big or small, I don't think that you should hide that kind of thing. I think that, that that's something that makes you as an individual, you as an individual. And I think that that plays a really key part in understanding your self-awareness and understanding how you fit in the world, you know, because mm-hmm. I think that's a really huge thing today is that we don't find out where we're supposed to fit. And we're not we're told exactly what step to take and where and we're, t- we're told, you know, after university, you need a nine to five job or else you're gonna fail, you know, and then it's like, nine to five, and then family and then kids and then where, where, where's the fun? Where's the yeah. playtime? You know, like kids get it. Why don't we anymore? <laughs> where, yeah, like, where's the thing I was put on this earth to do? because <laughs> yes. yes. something tells me i was not meant to just punch this clock and do the same thing over and over day in and day mm-hmm. out and 
Yeah, we do follow that. We follow the we follow the playbook in front yeah. of us. We've been told our whole lives, go to school, get good grades, you graduate and then you get a good job and you pay for bills. And then those bills get bigger as you acquire more responsibilities. And now you have a don't family and then you realize that you don't really like the job you're doing, but you kind of need the income from that job. Because if you lose, if you leave the job, then you can't support the family in the house that you you, you built along the way. So this is kind of a, and then you buy a Tesla Roadster, you know, and then you buy a Tesla Roadster and you're like, hell, this is, this is me now. Yeah. This, <laughs> you have this a midlife crisis and a breakdown. Yeah. Um, I'd love I to mean, know how your entrepreneurial journey began um, and what that's been like. I imagine it's been a roller coaster and I'd love yeah, to, yeah. cause you, you mentioned, I, I love how you put the emphasis on a lot of failures. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I imagine that's yeah. been a roller coaster in itself. Yeah. And, and that's like, that's not even me as an entrepreneur. That's just my, my life in general. <laughs> it's just like <laughs> failure, growth, failure, growth, failure, growth. And I think that's super important to, to, to you know, personal growth in and of itself. So, you know, um, I've always had an entrepreneurial kind of je ne sais quoi, like the, the, the drive. Mm -hmm. Right. And it really started in first year university because I remember like all of my friends were, were talking and bouncing ideas off each other. And it was like the first time that I was in an environment where like there was brainstorming happening all the time. And I loved it. I, I needed it like a, like a drug almost, you know? And I was there every day, every day at my friend's house talking, bouncing ideas off one another. It was like, it was like a mini shark tank mm -hmm. and it was so great. And so I always remembered, I'm like, and I, and I reached out to my friend, my friend, Phil, who, who also has, uh, you know, ADHD and shout out to him because I love him so much, but he, we, we started a business in first year university. We're like, let's go, let's dig into it. Let's, let's make this little town ours. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and in case you guys don't know, I lived in a, in a university town called Aniganish, Nova Scotia, which was a county, first of all, and Second of all, it's like 5,000 people of which 3,000 of which are students. Huh. Okay? Yeah, <laughs> tiny. Yeah. And so we really started this thing. We went in strong. We had packages and that, this, this, that, and the other thing. And uh, we ate it. It sucked. It, it lost. We gave up. But, you know, we learned a lot from it. And, and that was like the beginning of it. You know, that was the beginning of my drive and my entrepreneurial, you know, ventures, I guess, you know. And then I started working for startups after startups after startups and started working on building something from the ground up. You know, I was always like first three employees. So it's yeah. like me and two other guys and we're just like digging in and it was awesome. And then, you know, I, I, I worked, I had the choice to work a corporate job. So when I graduated university or prior to graduating university, I was offered a couple of jobs in New York, Toronto, and Montreal. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so New York was like an absolute no, because cost of living is like $100,000 US and I was making 30. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was like, why the math is upside down understand. on that? Ah, yeah. And even in Brooklyn, I was looking in Brooklyn, it was like $45,000. I'm like, sorry. I, um, no, I'm good. Yeah. Um, so I, and then my mom had mentioned, she's like, hey, if you want to live with me, I'll support you in regards to rent until you get your feet like on the ground and whatnot. So I said, okay, I'll take, I'll take the job in Montreal. And uh, so I worked for Pornhub, you know, and I, I worked for Pornhub and it was awesome. So I worked for the, the uh, advertising platform called Traffic Junkie. We, we, uh, we had an amazing team. My manager, Chris was like, an amazing guy always helped me and he knew exactly what I needed to stay on track, which mm -hmm. was like beyond amazing, you know, but, uh, I wasn't into the whole corporate life, you know, like working for somebody and listening to other people tell me what to do. And then, you know, all of this high school drama about like who you're supposed to be friends with and who you're not supposed to be friends with and what you're wearing and how you react to things. And, you know, like we had the biggest parties in the world, but it was like, oh, but if you actually have fun at those parties, you're not cool. Like, yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> you can't, you, know, you can't enjoy what you just set up. Yeah. And it was like huge parties, huge. Yeah. And it was great. But then, you know, I got fired. I'm going to be completely honest about it. Um, I, I, I said and did some shit on a stuff on a, <laughs> on a, on a call, on a business call. And, you know, I, I don't really believe it was that bad, but, 
you live and learn. So that was my first, my first loss. I, I, I lost, I lost my job and then I lost my freedom because of COVID. So um, in Montreal, it's curfew. All right. So it's like 1984 in here. You know, I, I, we have to be in at eight o'clock and we're only allowed leaving at 7am. Mm-hmm. And so I lost my freedom. So I lost my job and then my freedom. And then I was spiraling out of control, spiraling, spiraling, spiraling. And, you know, I, I, I always had this need for external validation from other people. So it's like, Oh, Ben, you're good and you're smart and you're attractive and you're good, 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 good. You know, like I needed it because I didn't have it in myself. I didn't have that, you know, love for myself or any affirmations of anything. Right. And so other people were, I like, I had some like little fame in the Philippines, really long story, something we can talk about another time. (laughs) And, you know, I, uh, I gave in to that external validation. I, 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 I fucked up. Sorry. I, uh, I made it, I made it, I made a conscious decision to cheat or speak to another girl, you know, while I had an amazing girlfriend and who I'm, whom I'm still in love with for God's sakes. Um, and so I lost all three things at once. And my stepdad owns a digital marketing firm. And he told me, he's like, look, Ben, if you want to work for me, I'll give you director of sales. You can take care of that. You can do that. Find, find where your niche is, but under one condition, I only am going to hire you if you start something on your own from scratch, you know? Hmm. And then uh, I founded the arbitrary author and he is a truly unprofessional professional. Yeah. And, uh, (laughs) and so I started that and I've been blogging and I've been podcasting and I've been doing a lot of SEO and a lot of growth. And, you know, I, I, I thank him a lot for where I, where I am right now, because without him, I don't know where I'd be. So thank you to him. And I think that what I've realized over all of this was that you really grow by understanding where you failed, you know, Mm. and, and you really grow by having a better understanding of where you feel like you'd fit, you know, because when I was working the corporate life, I was just taking, you know, I was taking money from clients and I was giving them no value in return. And then, and then I, and then I started working with Mark Elliott and we started actually bringing value to people. Like I got told yesterday off a consulting job. I, he says, I am so thankful for you. And yeah. that like just hearing it, it, it made me happy, you know, grateful and appreciative for where I am and what I've done. Because like, I know for a fact that I've, I've screwed the pooch like hard yeah, and I've made huge mistakes that I regret. And, you know, I think it just makes you who you are and it makes you realize that taking and hurting and, you know, just all of those negative, like tar, like emotions are something that are covering up other emotions and pain mm-hmm. and all of these things. So I think it really made me realize where I was and where my faults were and what issues I had to deal with to pri- prior to moving on to being the person that I feel like I am today. Yeah. That's an amazing journey. And, and I can imagine kind of the ups and downs along the way through that all. Mm. And uh, probably the lo- a lot of the lessons, because as you're working on your project now, you mentioned applying SEO and mm. also working for a number of startups. What was one of the keys or some of the keys you could share with some of our listeners that you learned working with multiple startups that they, that they were able to do that would either lead to their success or lead to their demise? There's always le- something to learn. You know, you, you never know everything. So when I was always at a startup, I was like a sponge and I still am to this day, you know, like even with you, like I checked out your website and I was like in indulging in the kind of content that you're putting out, you know, Mm -hmm. and it was like specifically about the modern man. Oh God, I love it. So like, (laughs) I love it. I have so much to talk about in regards to that. Thank you. (laughs) But really it was about, you know, me being more modest, you know, it was, it was about understanding that there's always something to learn from somebody. So if you're working with somebody, absorb what they're like, absorb that energy, man. Like, especially with startups, I find that everyone has like this college football-esque energy. It's yeah. like, I want to get into the NFL, you know? Mm-hmm. It's like that kind of grit and like grinding that really makes them who they are. So it's like the entrepreneurs and those startups are like the college sports players like they need to get to where they're going 
and they have drive and ambition to get there. So they always have something to give. So what I learned is networking is so important, whether it be through, you know, customer acquisition or clubhouse or podcasting, you know, like there's always a way to network. There's always a way to absorb like information and knowledge and learning to reciprocate. So by taking, you're also giving without even realizing it. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's something I really learned. And something else I really learned is that, (laughs) and this one is a not so good one. It's that, you know, you're accountable for your actions. You're, you're going to be accountable. So whether that be like one day where you wake up and you're hungover and you're like, hell, I'm not going to this 9am meeting. And then you miss the 9am meeting, but the 9am meeting was something that was life changing for the brand, you know? So it it makes you very uh, accountable for your actions. And it really gives you the opportunity to say, you know, I want to do this or I don't want to do this. And it's a choice. It's a concert conscious choice rather than you working at a, at a corporation and you having to be there by 9am and then you have to leave by five, if that, yeah. you know? So I think that there's two sides to the coin. You get, you get a lot, but you also lose a lot. And there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of volatility to it. So it's not for everybody. I do not think it is made for everybody, but I think that COVID has really given us the opportunity to be able to take that chance. And I'm really happy for it. And I'm really appreciative of it. Yeah. Um, I I wanted to ask something that you touched on earlier um, about when you were talking about when you were in college. And I I remember you, you had it listed in your bio Mm -hmm. about um, like the ADHD medicine that like, (laughs) yeah, that's out there (laughs) prescribed. And I mean, and we've seen documentaries on it. We we've seen Mm -hmm. people come out and speak on it. Um, I'd love to give you the platform really quick to, to yeah. share what y- yeah, your experience mm-hmm. with these medications are and re- really what words of caution you would give to yeah. some of our listeners because um, Adderall specifically, what you mentioned earlier, I, I've known some college students to use that not for the necessity of it, but also for um, kind of like the limitless pill, right? Oh, I have, mm-hmm. a, I have a, an exam tomorrow. I got to get this paper out or whatnot. Let me pop an Adderall. Um, that's so dangerous. And mm-hmm. I'd, I'd love to kind of give you the opportunity to talk on that really yeah. quick, because I, I really think for our listeners, the high achievers out there, there's so much pressure we put on ourselves. Yeah. Um, don't, bet. don't go for that or quote unquote, sell yourself yeah. to that. Don't, don't, I'm telling you right now, don't, because everyone thinks that Adderall and, 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 and specifically Adderall I'm talking about right now, because like, that's, that was my, like, it was like a poison almost It changed me. Mm. It it's you're taking meth. Okay. It's an amphetamine. All right. So first of all, it's a highly addictive drug. It's like very highly addictive. You need to wean off of it slowly, almost like an antidepressant. Mm. And so I, you know, I've been taking these ADHD medications for since I was 15, I would say. And I've been on, you know, Concerta to Adderall to Viavans to you name it. And uh, man, I, I, there's a lot of good to them, but there's also a lot of bad. So personally, Adderall, it it messed with my brain. It made, it made, it makes you into a robot. You know, it, it, you cannot appreciate the present moment because you're always thinking about the future you're always thinking about, oh, I need to be there. I need to get to that. I need to, I need to achieve that and this and this. You're never present. You're never like, I had a good day today. It's always, okay, on to the next task, on to the next task. And, and, then, and then you forget about eating and you forget about sleeping and you forget about you know, basic human needs, really. And so you know, at some points, like, I'm not even going to lie about it. Like I... I I was taking double doses sometimes because like I wasn't able. So for me, um, what, what are they called? Like scheduled education, like standardized testing was really hard for me. So I would always double cram, cramming two pills and I would study for 48 hours on end in the library. And by the end of university, I just felt like an empty shell. 
You know, I wasn't me anymore. I was getting so angry at everything. My fuse was like cut in half, right? And so these drugs are really dangerous. Like they're overprescribed, first of all. And then nobody tells you about how to do things on your own. So presently, right now, I am weaning off of my medication as a general whole, right? So I was on... Adderall 40s, and then I changed to Viavans, and now my Viavan is cut in half, and I'm taking a plethora of amino acids and supplements and vitamins and minerals and all of these different things that, because the thing about ADHD is that there's a lack of, your dopamine receptors aren't working as well, so they're not producing as much dopamine, so that sense of accomplishment doesn't really happen, right? So, I can, t- I can count on my, on one hand, how many times I've been, a- I felt accomplished and truly accomplished in my life, you know, yeah. and that sucks <laughs> like yeah. full on. So, you know, I think that there's a lot of danger, but like I said, I'm not a professional. I cannot give my professional opinion on this. I think that everybody's bodies are different. Everybody's ways that they react to drugs or, you know, amino acids or whatever, whatever works for you, as long as you're staying safe and you're growing and you're feeling like you're actually the person that you're meant to be. And not just because you're feeling pressure from friends, families, associates, you know, students and teachers, and don't feel like you need to do that for them. Do it for you because, you know, in the end, you're the only person that you have at the end of the night. And as long as you're doing something for you and that it brings you value, then that's all that matters. It's just that my personal opinion is that there's so many things that you can do on your own to make sure that those side effects or those things that make us, us, like are, you know, halved. So, and I, and I think that, and I'm, I'm going to, pointed out that the best thing for me personally has been meditation. You know, mm-hmm. I meditate once, if not twice a day and minimum 15 minutes a day, you know, nice. I do that and I meditate and I, and I do yoga for, you know, 20 minutes a day. And then I also at least try to get some air. So I'll, I'm gonna, I'll go for a run or I'll go for a walk or I'll go skiing or whatever it may be. I need to get out of my head. Cause and just it, a reminder for our, our, our listeners and viewers, like he's in Montreal. <laughs> so yeah. that's, it's cold right now. Oh yeah. It's cold, cold. Like it's, <laughs> it is negative 10 degrees Celsius right now. Oh my gosh. So negative 10 degrees Celsius um, for everyone in the States. I want to say that's check probably that let's yeah. Ch- test me on this one. I want to say that's about what? 27 degrees, 26. Uh, negative Maybe 10, less. No, probably in the teens. F. It is 14 degrees, 14 degrees. Yeah. I used to be a meterologist. I used to know that a lot better. Uh, <laughs> my head. So um, if my, if my upper atmospheric professor is listening to the podcast, I apologize, Mr. Larry. Uh. <laughs> uh, ben, didn't yeah. mean to cut you off there, but I mean, no, thank you for sharing that. Cause mm-hmm. I, I do think it's important for folks to understand you, you don't want to abuse the tools that yeah. are in front of us and it's not necessarily like you're not saying yes no do this don't do that like you mentioned everyone's body is different but yeah. it's the abuse of the tool or the substance that really yeah. makes it that much more dangerous uh, i wish we had more so much more time man because we can there's so much more we didn't even touch on and i i definitely encourage the listeners to to hop onto yeah. our patreon so they could hear some of the extra audio about our time working <laughs> campus vacations that's something we had in common um but i want to make sure that folks can reach out to you yeah. can contact you follow some of the work you're doing and, mm-hmm. and uh, get more value from from you on their own so how can they do that what's the best links so um instagram is probably the best if not add me on linkedin my handles are at ben sclevas and uh soon to come so probably by the time that this podcast launches the arbitrary author is going to be out and ready to go so I'm really looking forward to it. And I hope that you guys check it out because it is a purely non-professional professional opinion of my life. I love that. I'm excited for that, to be honest, because I think, Hell yeah. you know, sometimes it's good to loosen up the tie and just get a little unprofessional in your professional setting and just exactly. tell it like it is. 
I think that's how business should be done, you know? Yeah. Like, why why do you have to wear a suit and tie? Why do you need to meet somebody at a lunch meeting? Like, why do you need to go golfing? Like, I, yeah. I don't I don't like it. I like being casual. I like giving value. And however that may be, whether whatever I'm wearing, whatever I'm saying, if I drop a bomb once in a while, like, so be it. Just yeah. get over it. Yeah, you know? get comfortable, right? right? It's like, let's, let's meet each other where we're at. I'm going to do something one day. I'm just going to schedule a business meeting at a skydive location it's like yeah we're gonna do hell this, yeah uh, that's lit we're, we're gonna do this after we jump out that's of a plane so cool. <laughs> awesome man like, yeah we're gonna be business partners let's jump out of a plane first i want to know if i can trust you i want to know if you're a real brother you know like, yeah <laughs> that's my roommate it's like why, why didn't the partnership work out he didn't jump out of the plane he didn't jump out of the plane <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i knew he wasn't ride or die <laughs> like, million dollar deal screw it nah 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 he didn't jump nah. <laughs> <laughs> ben, thank you so much. This is so valuable. And um, I, I appreciate first your gift of storytelling, but I also appreciate your your vulnerability and your honesty with, with me you. and the audience. I could hear it. I know they can hear it. And it really resonates. And I just want to kind of recap some of the things you said along the way that really yeah, stuck yeah. out, uh, stuck out to me that I really would love our, our listeners to take take hold of. First, it's my power. We we have these these descriptions or these these prescribed titles that get given to us and we look at it as something to be ashamed of something to hide or something to define us when it can in essence be our power and changing that into your power is something that's amazing failure to growth failure to growth ben mentioned how many startups he's worked for how many failures he's had but the pattern has always been failure to growth and of course focusing on that is the main thing um you grow by understanding, understanding where you fail. That's kind of where I was following up with is when you understand where you fail, that's when you take the lessons and then you can apply that moving forward. And there's always something to learn. I could tell Ben is a learner. He is a, he is a sponge as he mentioned, and he's learning everything and absorb the energy of the network around you. Those oh, yeah. people who are working in startups, he mentioned the college athletes, right? Everybody wants to be like them, but you know that they're hungry for something. And there's so much to learn. So build that circle, learn from them, understand the gifts that come with it but you're also accountable and you have to show up and you have to do it for you last point regardless of what it is you're stepping into moving forward with do it for yourself not for what others will think not for the people who are surrounding you who in their love are trying to give you suggestions but it might not be what you want for yourself or what's best for yourself so do it for you those are my notes those are my feedbacks ben thank you man for sharing with us today Thank you, man. Thank you for having me. I'm, uh, I'm really happy that I got on here and I'm really happy that we talked. Yeah, it was a pleasure. And I uh, definitely will continue to connect after the recording. But I uh, yeah. just want to tell the listeners, if, if you guys enjoyed this episode, we appreciate you rocking with us all the way to the end. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Give us a rating. Let us know yeah. how we're doing because that's how we improve and get better for you guys. If you've loved this episode, share it with a friend. We appreciate the word of mouth. And of course, we always tell you that you can support the podcast if you love it so much for as little as $1 a month on our Patreon page. That's where you could hear the extra audio with Ben and our other guests as well. Guys, thank you so much. And as we always say at the end of the episode, everybody wants the sunshine, but they don't want the rain, but you can't get the pleasure without a little pain. Let's Damn. Go. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> the no rain no rainbows podcast is recorded at camaraderie a collective workspace in greenville south carolina right off the swamp rabbit trail if you're looking for a place to grow your business network with other professionals and establish your own workspace camaraderie is the place to do so